Welcome back to another episode, you guys. Today, we're going to be diving deep into what makes you unique and how that calls your people to you. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Flamingo Advantage, my friends. I'm Katie Horner, your host. And with me today is a guest who is a member of one of the masterminds that I pay to participate in. He's an amazing marketer. He's built an incredible business for himself. Um, he's much younger than I am even and doing amazing things in the world. I can't wait to hear all the wisdom that he has to share with us around marketing and being ourselves. And so um, join me in welcoming Roland Cochran to the episode. I'm so excited to have you with us today. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm excited to be here too. This is exciting to exciting to jam with our uh, mastermind members in a way of serving um, people outside our mastermind. It's kind of a cool experience. Yeah. Well, tell people about how you got into doing what you're doing today. I know you you know none of us wakes up a marketer <laughs> at 10 years old. So um, tell us a little bit of your backstory and then lead into uh, how you're helping people in the world today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a it's funny, my, my story is typical, but then I chose, I think, maybe an atypical direction um, towards the end. Um, but the beginning was was quite typical, right? Uh, growing up, I you know was blessed to have, um, we weren't rich, but we weren't poor, and um, mom stayed home. So, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, there was no reason for me to necessarily not uh, get what I wanted. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there was a plethora of um, things that uh, weren't handled well as, as with all of us. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I won't, you're not going to, you're not going to hear me complain about, um, you know, the, well, the container wasn't perfect, but uh, the container was set up for me to kind of, um, uh, you know, do, do whatever it was that I wanted to do. And so in my case, I discovered physical therapy as my first career. And, um, and, and I was lucky, so lucky that I discovered it young. I discovered it at 15. Well, you won't be licensed until you're 26 at the earliest, 27 uh, on average. So the cool thing was I had 11 years to really plan my career before I was even gonna have my career. And um, that, that was so cool because when you're that young, um, you're not thinking about the details that are kind of distracting, right? Like what payroll company am I going to use? Am I going to use QuickBooks? Am I going to use, you know, that's what everybody else is thinking. That wasn't what I was thinking. I was dreaming about cool stuff, right? The uh, company culture, you know, you hear somebody and they're like, oh, we give, I'm like, oh, I'm going to give my employees their birthday off paid, right? There's just little things to, you know, like, oh, that's going to maintain the culture. So it's kind of cool. I spent really 11 years dreaming about um, what one would say, what really matters. Um, and, uh, but then here's where it got weird. And this is where probably most people can relate was um, two years in, um, I, I, I'm bored. I'm bored. Um, you know, it's the, the realities of business ownership are very different than what we dreamed. You dream about the work and the impact you're going to have on people. The realities of ownership um, uh, can't, uh, I'll get to how you can still do those awesome things. Um, but the realities of ownership are, you know, 80 to 90% of the stuff you're doing um, is trying to drive business into your business. I mean, it's just, um, you know, until you really get that rhythm down, that is, that is what you do. And um, it is, it, it was exhausting. And so what happened was I wanted to quit. And I decided, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to quit. So I kind of set my business up. It didn't really need me and uh, physical therapy business. I had a couple of locations and it didn't really need me. And um, so I set it up and I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to let it run itself into the ground and then I'll get into something else. Cause by the time, and most entrepreneurs can, can probably relate to this. By the time you learn the ins and outs of business with your first business, you actually learn how business works. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I could open up, I could buy a Baskin Robbins franchise. I could open up a Subway <laughs> sandwich location. I could open up a, a, a dog, you know, dog food store. I mean, you start to gain confidence in your ability to, to bring things to the marketplace. Um, but here's the crazy thing. And this is what we're going to really talk about on the podcast. Um, what happened was not what you thought. Rather than the business running into the ground, I was using all the money to really become the best I could become to prepare myself for my next my next venture. Um, and so I was floating in the float tanks and um, uh, uh, you know hiring uh, shamans to kind of explore different areas of my mind and you know expose me to different thought processes that I'd, I'd never thought of in, in, in my life before and hiring this coach for this thing and that coach for that thing, going to this mastermind and this conference. Well, what happened was 
people at all the networking events took interest in me and not my business. Why are you floating in the float tank, Roland? Like, what, 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 why would you pay $110 and float in a dark abyss for 90 minutes of your life? Why would someone do that? Oh, and then I have to explain what it does, what it's all about, theoretically. Um, and so um, to, to make it really concise, all of a sudden, people who weren't paying attention to me before started. And next thing you know, I'm going to the networking events. I'm not trying to be impressive. They keep prying and asking questions. I, I'm trying to talk about them. They won't allow me to talk about them. They want to know what I'm up to. And so I became a person. I, I be because I was finally doing life for me, they were all interested. And here's why I don't have evidence to prove this, but here, here's why I suspect this works. They all want to be themselves. And so when they see somebody who's cracked the code and figured out how to be them um, all day, every day, full time and, and, be, and be proud of it, it's just it's magnetic, not for the reason that you would think it's not magnetic for you. It's because they see something that they want and they're curious what the journey was like to get there. And that was what really blossomed this new marketing journey of. Uh, and I did not even set out to do this, but I just got so once I cracked this code and I started seeing people at the top and that was what they were doing, too. It was like, oh, my gosh, it's really not as complicated as we think. We are all being business people. No one wants to do any business with us because that's annoying. And these people are being themselves and playing for legacy. And it is so magnetic. And they all everyone else thinks they need the money to become that person. It's the opposite. You become that person and then you get the money. Yeah. And I, I love that that and the way that you just explained that, because I think so many of us are kind of we've lived in delayed gratification and we think we have to work hard. We think we have to keep going like when I get to here, then I will do this. When I get to here, then I'll buy the house, then I'll take the vacation, then I'll upgrade the car, then I'll spend time with the kids, then I'll, you know, and what we need to do is work on doing the building those things into our life now so that we can enjoy them and like live life. That's why you wanted to start a business in the first place for most of us. So we could have the life we wanted. You Which know? would make sense now, why the other entrepreneurs would be attracted to you because you did the thing that everyone was trying to do. And the irony is you're being insanely selfish, living your best life. And I know everyone's like, well, what would that have to do with them? It has everything to do with them because it's ultimately what we're all trying to do. And you had the bravery or the courage or the tenacity or the uh, wherewithal or the clarity to actually crack the code and, and almost defy what the, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s brainwashed us into uh, thinking. And, you know, this new economy is it's demanding uh, it's demanding a different thing than history has taught. And I think that's why so many people are having a hard time adopting this is it's like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I have to do business. And it's like, well, you had you, that worked back in the day when that worked, it worked. And um, now it's not scarce anymore. And we know what's scarce is what people pay attention to. And what's scarce is, is a strong sense of self and a strong sense of direction. It's just it's so uncommon. And so if you can become one of the people who has that, um, you know, you almost, I, I, uh, my keynotes called a personal brand that sells itself. And what I mean is it's, it, and everyone's like, Ooh, that sounds alluring. And then they come and, you know, they watch it and you see probably three quarters of the room check out because they're like, he's high. This isn't right. There's no way this is correct. And, um, <laughs> then a quarter of the room who has been there, which I guess would be a lot of your listeners, they hear it and they go, they, you know, they picture somebody in their mind, they go, oh my gosh, that is actually how it works. And it's, yeah. it, it cracks that little, it, I've had people contact me a year after the keynote and say, hey, Roland, I've watched your keynote 23 times and um, it couldn't be truer. And it's, and it's so funny because it's the most basic, most basic keynote. I don't really tell anyone anything, but I tell them everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I know when I heard you present, um, I wrote down a quote and I, I brought it with me today because I wanted us to I wanted us to, to to touch on this with with this idea of being being you, like mm -hmm. letting your business serve you so that then you are even a more attractive mm -hmm. uh, teacher or provider for your people. Right. But you I wrote down that and this may not be exactly what you said, but this is what I wrote down when I heard you. You said people will choose you for you because everybody has access to the fancy tools and the gadgets and the AI, et cetera. But what they want is access to you. What they want is 
is like the you, is the personality, is the experiences, is the whatever. So, so dive into that and explain that to us a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's, all, and I'll do it really short because more words will just make it more confusing. And it's really not a confusing concept. Previously, what was scarce was a nice camera, a nice studio, a podcast. Wow, if you had a podcast, I mean, you were really somebody, right? Um, truth of the matter is you have a credit card. You can basically have any, <laughs> you have credit card and an Amazon account. You can have a grass wall behind you with your podcast name and neon and uh, the best camera. And you probably have it all set up and running um, if you watch a couple of YouTube videos. And, and back in the day, no one knew that. Now everyone knows that. And so what happens is... Uh, if it's easy, you don't get credit for it is really what's going on. And so that the challenge for entrepreneurs is um, we're being fed the story of, oh, get this and you'll get business. Uh, make content and fancy reels on Instagram and you'll get business. Buy this and you'll get business. We got to keep in mind the people telling us to do these things are selling the thing. And so, of course, they're telling you that's out. But again, if you if you follow the follow how business really works, People are searching for the most um, impressive, uh, rare uh, uh, solution. So in a world where those things aren't impressive anymore and they're everywhere, the uh, and admits, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but, you know, no, um, a lot of uh, marketing is now presenting authority and credibility that you don't quite have. And, um, and we've gotten really good at it. And so now trust is at an all time low. So I think it's the combination of everyone having the fancy gadgets, gadgets, and then trust being at, 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 a, at an all time low because of how many people are um, pretending to be something because it's really mm -hmm. easy to do that in 90 seconds <laughs> on, on an Instagram reel. Um, the combination of those two things, People are now searching for authenticity more than ever because of those two things. And the reason you need to be you, it's, it's the one thing you can't fake. And that is, and so I'm telling you to just show them who you are, just show them who you are, because in the end, they're, when they watch the, re, the Instagram thing or they're reading your email, what they are now looking for is not um, gimmicky stuff. They've seen it all before. They're really looking for bits and pieces of you in the email. Um, I read, what was it? I think Molly um, posted a, a, her like marketing thing in our mastermind group. And I read her email. I could almost like hear her telling me it was just so authentic. She wasn't trying to hustle me. She was just, and that's what I'm saying is when people consume your content, your email, your video, your your video course, whatever it is, they're looking for bits and pieces of you because it's the only thing that we can, that we can trust. Cause you can't fake authenticity. And even a child can pick up on your authentic presence. It is something humans are very, very, very good at. So all that to say, um, you can't fake it. And in this new economy, I think the people who are, um, the people who only know how to perform and don't know how to be, uh, they're going. They're going to. They're going to start struggling financially. We're, we're already seeing it. Um, the pe the people who are who have made a business that's too businessy and not enough of them. Um, I mean, we're seeing it in our group, right? People just they haven't interjected enough of them, um, and that was great because they're like, oh, great, I'm out of my business. I don't have to be there. And um, it's like, uh oh, now people want to do. You know, you've heard the saying, people do business with people, not businesses. And so, if your business looks like a business. Um, we got, we got to watch out for that, right? In this new economy. Yeah. I think that's, that's so very true. And while there are ways that we want to try to make sure our business can run without us, or, you know, is it really a business? There's that question too, right? right. But we've also got to keep it infused with that authenticity, mm -hmm. like you're saying, and that right. personality. Um, because especially now, like there's all the tools, there's the AI, there's all these different things that everyone has access to, like you said. Mm -hmm. And eventually all the marketing starts looking the same. Yes. And so we've got to, you know, how, how do you stand out and be different? How do you be pink in the sea of blue and green, right? Mm -hmm. um, is to, to stand out and get noticed, you, you have to be you. You have to do things your way, not right. the way everyone else is doing them, or you're just going to blend into the sea of everything else that's not really getting seen or get attention. Correct. And I'll, I'll say this too, and this is... <laughs> I'm not saying this to be depressing. I'm just saying this because this is the facts. Right now, authenticity 
is scarce. But I'm telling you right now, 10 years from now, just out of necessity for businesses just to survive, people are going to discover more of their purpose. They're going to just tap into more of their calling. They're going to express more of their authentic selves. And I'm just forewarning every entrepreneur right now, this is great. Get into it now. Get good at it. Um, be one of the first pioneers to really be self um, and tap into purpose. Um, but I'm just telling you, uh, if the writing is on the wall, if you look at how economies work, people chase the scarcity. Um, and if we look at Maslow's pyramid, the scarcity, you know, first safety was a scarcity, then connection was a scarcity, um, or, uh, um, you know, uh, physiological needs, safety, uh, connection was a scarcity, then esteem was a scarcity. So we saw brand names and uh, all these, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, YouTube channels and MySpaces, everyone trying to be. Um, but if you look at the top of that pyramid, um, now, if nothing else is scarce below, which it's not, we live in a world of just disgusting abundance and, and so much access to anything you could ever, ever need. Uh, that top of that pyramid is self-actualization. And so naturally hardwired into our DNA, humans are going to go and look for the next, the next deficit. And it's self-actualization, a sense of self, uh, um, discovering oneself and expressing oneself. And uh, we're already seeing this. I mean, the top you know, eight of the top 10 books are self-improvement books. Um, the people who dominate YouTube and the social media channels are all um, discovering oneself and, and bettering oneself. It's just, yeah, it's, it's funny how we're so, wrong. so preoccupied right. with that, right? Like, right. I, 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 I want right. to know more about me, right? Yeah. It's, it's so natural. Um, and I think that, I think a lot of the people in my space feel, feel like they can't self-express or they can't be true to who they really are authentic because in some ways our culture has taught us that that is, that's egotistical or that's yes. selfish or that's prideful or that's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Make it all about the person. And it is about the people that we're helping. But if we don't get their attention first with how we're different and you don't have to be boastful about it, but just like tell the truth about what you've done and what you've accomplished and how you've helped people. Right. Um, well, that's the difference between because what you're talking about is actually a real thing, because I think most of my clients, I would say 90 percent of my clients, the biggest barrier. And sometimes it can take them a year to get over this, which which sounds crazy. But um, there was such this obsession with being humble. Right. The generation before us, that was the big thing be humble, don't brag. Um, Seth Godin is one of the world's best marketers. And one thing he says is there's no scarcity of humble people. There's scarcity of proud people. And so there is a difference between cocky and proud. And there is nothing wrong with being proud of, of yourself, what you're trying to accomplish, what you have accomplished. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you can, if you can speak from a place of, I'm really proud of who I am and who I'm becoming, there is nothing cocky about that. And, and you will, everyone's always worried, oh, I'm going to get all the haters and the bad comments. I'm telling you right now, my, I, to this day, I'm not sure if any of my clients, I know this sounds like an audacious statement. I'll have to ask everybody, but I'm not sure if my clients get a ton of hateful comments. It's just, when you come from a place of pride, it's really hard to take that person down. Um, you know, it, it, it's when someone hears someone who's proud of themselves, not their accomplishments, but who they are. It's hard to come up with a with a with a hateful comment. <laughs> it's just it's really hard to tear them down because they're not telling you what to do. They're just simply saying, "Oh, I did this," and, and it's and it's really neat. What do you say about that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I it's fascinating, I and mean, you you've left us so many nuggets today that we can take in and plug into our our own personal branding. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, you guys that are listening, watching this, uh, RolandCochran.com is where you want to go and connect. We'll have all of his links in the show notes uh, for those who want to go deeper with him. But uh, Roland, thank you for being with us today. What What's the last thing you would leave us with in terms of marketing our personal brand? For far too long, we have separated work and our personal life. Um, and that was, you know, passed down to us as something that was once thought of as inappropriate. Um I will encourage you. I'm not even going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you integrate the two or you may start to really struggle. Um, it's a um, when you separate the two, it puts up kind of uh, some red flags for people. You know, what are you hiding? Who are you actually? So, you know, do your best to integrate the two. And, and, and people are saying, oh, well, what do I post? What do I talk about? The journey you're on, you're going to mastermind. Tell us about the mastermind. If you were wrong about something and you're admitting that you're wrong and you're and you're trying to, you know, you're seeing a therapist and you're trying to do something a different way, tell us about what you discovered. I mean, the journey you're on is your personal brand. 
there's nothing you need to, you don't need to create a personal brand. You're already doing it right now. Just tell us. Love it. The journey you're on is your personal brand. Yes, correct. Um, what a fabulous way to end this. And, you know, my word for the year is becoming. And uh, I love who I love who we are becoming. And I'm, I'm grateful to have had you spend this time with us today. Thank you. Roland. Yeah, I know. I'm happy we met and I uh, look forward to seeing you in Costa Rica. All right, my friends, uh, listen in for the next episode. Share this with somebody who needs to hear it, someone who needs some encouragement to uh, play full out and be who they were created to be to help the people they were put in the world to help. Uh, we're excited to see what comes of this as we share this message with the world. I uh, encourage you to connect with Roland, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yes, bye. Thanks, everybody.